Hey guys, Rocket Rob here. Welcome to episode 3 of Weird, Wacky and Winning. We've got two exciting matches to go through today. And this is a triple special. We're seeing triple. Both of our matches will feature three figures that you don't usually see run in threes. Which is going to be quite interesting. We're going to start with one that I found today that features triple Mewtwo. Let's go have a look at that one right now. Okay, so the two players here are both Japanese players. In the red corner, we have the Weird and Wacky deck with the triple Mewtwo. We've got a Primal Kyogre. We've got double... Uh, we've got double Cocos as well. And he starts having to defend straight from the beginning. But then he gets his Coco out and he... Yeah, he can put pressure. He can go straight onto that entry point and attack into that Sableye. Doesn't get the knockout there. But with the double re with the respin, the double chance, he gets a knockout on Sableye, which will now force his opponent to cover up goal with his Lucario. And he can now rush straight forward with his second Coco. His opponent doesn't have anything really to counter and he has to go and hope he gets lucky attacking in with his Mars Shadow. He doesn't. Now, the, uh, this opponent can, the yeah, the guy with the double Coco, he closes on in, he covers up uh, next to Lucario and threatens the game, but luckily his opponent scores the right spin and he gets the knockout there on the Coco. He does go for the takeaway, but he doesn't quite get that. So here we go, we're now going to start seeing these Mewtwo's and that's what I'm excited to see. I love Mewtwo, I, you know, I think it's an awesome figure, it's Gen 1, I'm a Gen 1er, I didn't really play much after, I mean I like Gen 2 as well to be honest, but um, other than that I just haven't played many of the new ones. So I really, really like Mewtwo, awesome figure, loved the original movie when that came out. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think of Mewtwo, both as a figure and as a Pokemon in general as well, so let me know in the comments below what yeah, where does this Mewtwo rack up in your favourites? But anyway, he's now going after... Uh, yeah, he's, he's starting to attack a little bit more, but he's not getting the rolls that he wants, and he has to go a, bit, a little bit defensively here. But he gets a surround there with the Coco. So for me, I feel like Mewtwo needs a bit of a change. It's... It's just not really powerful enough. The Mega, it's pretty cool how it can continue to stay Mega if it keeps attacking. But, it just... It doesn't have the, the power required these days. Okay, so the, the blue player gets the knockout there on the Mewtwo. And he manages to cover up both the entry points now. Mewtwo strikes back and gets the knockout on on uh, Mars Shadow. So we then have but yeah, these Cocos are doing pretty well at hitting their blues when when they're wanted, avoiding the takeaway there. Doesn't get the spin at once there, and another Mewtwo is knocked out. And yeah, I mean, I find it a bit unusual. We haven't seen a Mega Mewtwo yet. And that Kyogre is being really, really good in defense on the goal. It does now get confused, though, so that could be a problem. If it spins purple, that will go into a miss. And save life, save the day there, and we get a neutral roll. And straight away, the, our red player has pushed straight forward and threatening again with his Cocos. The double Coco combination is a brilliant combo. I used to run it myself quite a lot. I really, really love it. I mean, there are a lot of counters now for Coco, which has made it a bit mm, harder to play, but I guess 
since then as well, less players have been using those counters. So, interesting. Now though, we're at a big risk. Uh, the blue player goes for an attack on the Coco, doesn't get the spin he wants, and that's it. He's going to be surrounded by those Cocos. The Cocos have really been the star of this match. This is a weird, wacky game, and yeah, well done to the uh, player who came up with that deck there. Um, so, whoop, let me get rid of that one. We have one more match to feature. And this is actually a match that I played in. Unfortunately, I didn't win. <laughs> but uh, I was playing against XDAT in a D-Clan versus X-Clan tournament. And he came up with just a deck that I had no idea what to do. Right, so I'm running my standard... Um, I think I was running my standard... Uh, league deck? No, which deck did I go with here? Let's have a look. Yes, that's right. I went with my dragon deck, which ended up being a good choice for me in general, because my ghost deck would have absolutely gotten destroyed by Dax's combination. He's got the triple Gardevoirs, all with the Megas, and I had no idea how to play this, to be honest. I'm like, what, what do I do, you know? Those blue holes are just going to absolutely destroy me. I have to go Mega. I have to just take out his Gardevoirs and go for it. But, the trouble is, that Mew and that Lucario are a, just unbelievably difficult to take out with dragons. So, like, it was a real tough battle from the start for me. So right here we get the first Mega Gardevoir coming out. And he goes straight after my Altaria. I get a bit lucky there. I get the Perish Song onto his wife. So I'm like, alright, alright, let's Let's try to get you removed from play, if we can. Or, you know, let's just let's just see what happens. Unfortunately, I wasn't really in a position to attack, but it would have been nice. So yeah, I got, that's right, I've got my um, Mega Ray there, so that all the blues turn to miss. Um, and that's kind of what I was hoping for. Get the knockout on the Gardevoir here, so I'm like, okay, let's do it, let's go, let's take out that Mega. I know we can bring them back, but, like, if I can just get a few eliminations early, I can push forward, I'll have the advantage, and hopefully I can take out the game. And that was my plan, and I got the knockout here, I got the exclusion. So it's starting alright, I'm going okay so far. All right, another Perish Song there. And at this point, I'm just like, I don't want to really get uh, my Altaria exclu excluded. So let's go in uh, and threaten the surround here on the Lucario. Obviously, I've got to survive a roll up here. And yeah, can I do it? And I do. So at this point I'm thinking, alright, why don't we just, let's see if we can threaten the game here. I forgot he had the long throw. And I was like, alright, what are we going to do? Let's hope I get a lucky spin and can get a knockout. I don't, unfortunately. Can't get the knockout there. Let's try for final song. Alright, cool. Got the final song at least. And then I always do this, right? I always forget. I'm like, how many turns until final song activates? I'm like, I'm sure I got another turn or two. No, that's it. And then we get the Mega Gardevoir coming in. I am cursed. So if I was um, knocked out there, I would have been excluded. Luckily for me, that didn't happen. So I mean, really, I'm not, I'm not getting that unlucky with these spins. I was, I was doing pretty well. Uh, he gets the blue hole there, so I, my Altaria is taken out. And I don't like that because my Altarias are my, 
life jackets. They are my way of getting my figures back when they get excluded. So I still have one left. The final song goes down. He goes and brings back two excluded figures. This is where I start to get into trouble. So what I do, I do me meteoric teachings. I go in wanting to make sure I can just wreck some Gardevoirs. But I didn't really have much of a strategy. I'm like, what am I going to do after that? There's a bloody Mew on the goal. I don't know how I'm going to knock that little thing out. I mean, I was going to... Oh, the idea was I'll go bring Haxorus up a bit later. But, you know, it's a, it's a bloody tough defense to crack this one. Uh, sorry, Fraction, not Haxorus. And at this point, I realized, oh, I need to be defensive. I better jump back. Because I had left my goal open like a silly person. And now I'm like, oh, okay. Crap. Defend, defend, defend. And I don't get the good, I don't get a good spin there. Unfortunately. I've only got one figure on the field. He's got two figures pressing up. Go for the knockout with my Mega... Uh, sorry, with my Ray. And I do get it, thankfully. So then Lucario pushes forward. And I pop the Dragon Spear here. I figure I need the MP moves. I can't be stuck there with two useless rays that can't move more than one MP move. But I'm in trouble here. He's going he's gonna to capture both of my entry points. And then he's going to go for the Altaria. Gets a knockout there and I'm down to just two rays on the board. I don't think I've got even got a Meteoric Teaching Plate left at the moment. I could be wrong on that. And I can't add damage. I don't have my Altarius out on the, on the field. He's got a Mega. I, I'm out damaged there. And he can push forward. I'm down to one Ray. And that's really it. You know, the game's over. Um, that's, he got me there. Well done to that. Um, you know, that's a weird, wacky deck. It's winning. Unfortunately for me, I've seen it around in a few other matches as well. A few players have been talking about it. That it's a really unique deck. Well done on coming up with something a bit different um, in a time where we are kind of lacking inspiration, lacking new figures. So well done. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Hope you liked it. If you did, please uh, like the video, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, and yeah, check out uh, my Twitter, my Facebook page. They're all set up now. There's going to be a Discord server, which I will be setting up quite soon as well. Um, and yeah, hope you enjoy the rest of your day slash week. And this is Rocket Rob blasting off again.